This is the Brave New Coin Crypto Conversation, hosted by Andy Pickering. Hi everyone, Andy Pickering here. I'm your host and welcome to the Crypto Conversation, a Brave New Coin podcast where we talk to the people building the future in the Bitcoin, blockchain and cryptocurrency space. Five years ago, deep in a bear market, a group of traditional finance experts founded BitGet. And they've been building ever since. Now, with 20 million users worldwide, BitGet is committed to helping users trade smarter by providing a secure one-stop crypto investment solution with copy trading, future trading and spot trading. Your security is their priority and BitGet has one of the largest protection funds in the industry with US $300 million to cover potential trader losses from unforeseen events that are not due to misconduct from the user or platform. BitGet wants to inspire everyone to embrace Web3, so if you're new to crypto, learn more at the BitGet Academy with free blockchain courses, crypto guides, cryptocurrency trading strategies and more. Or for the experienced investor, trade smarter with daily access to institutional grade crypto market intelligence and trends analysis with BitGet Research. I've put links to BitGet Research and the BitGet Academy in the show notes, so get amongst it or simply go to bitget.com. Thank you to BitGet and now it is on with the show. My guest today is Alex Rivkin. Alex is the CEO of Rolabs. Uh, building out uh, the Ro protocol and interest rates derivatives uh, platform uh, founded in 2022. Welcome to the show, Alex. Hey, Andy. Thanks for having me. It is a pleasure. Alex, let's do what we do at the beginning of the show. It would be great if you could please introduce yourself. I'd love to hear a little bit of your personal and professional backstory. Uh, yeah, what you've been doing in the lead up. Uh, to getting involved with Row Labs and the Row Protocol. Yeah, sure, absolutely. Well, I'm on the personal side. I'm from Moscow originally. I've been living most of the past 12, 13 years, predominantly in London, but now I'm based in Lisbon, Portugal. Career-wise, uh, I went through, like a lot of people in crypto, from the traditional finance routes. Uh, I started back in 2010, as an equity sales trader and slowly progressed through a bunch of uh, capital markets, jobs and traditional finance, uh, finishing in finance finance with structuring derivative products for a bunch of clients in the Middle East and Switzerland and the UK. Uh, so we've done a lot of work helping a lot of different clients either create some products that would potentially help them express some views on some of the market movements and securities, commodities, and basically any anything in the world and helping corporate treasuries as well uh, to hedge various risks they have in currencies, commodity prices, anything to do in their business. I ran a couple of startups after based out of London, everything in fintech and crypto. And the last thing I did before all is running a product and technology at Copper. Uh, I think majority of the people in the industry know, but just in case, it's a one of the leading custodians and infrastructure providers, clearing networks for uh, institutional investors in the crypto and digital asset space. And uh, starting the end of 2022, I launched Raw Labs, which you kindly introduced and we are a non-custodial rates exchange currently on Arbitrum. Yes, indeed. And that brings us nicely up to date then. Uh, thank you, Alex. So yeah, talk to us a little bit then. So yeah, describe this. So Row, Row Protocol, as you mm -hmm. said, um, well, yeah, please, <laughs> I'll let you describe it. Go for it. <laughs> sure. <laughs> Look, it's 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 kind of the best kept secret and trap I guess for uh, people who never encountered or traded rates before, which is majority of uh, retail investors, uh, individual investors. If I may say, rates are the biggest asset class in terms of outstanding interest out there in finance. The numbers for outstanding interest are just funny. There are hundreds of trillions of dollars. Uh, and the, the reasons for that are, are quite clear, right? So everybody, by now, I think everybody knows how much they are affected by anything that happens in interest rates. Some of the people say that they would love to know what interest rates are before the financial crisis in 2008. And by now, a lot of people kind of know whether you're holding the mortgage or you're managing a massive bond fund for PIMCO, you kind of know what, what happens to you when the central banks hike the interest rates and everybody is watching those announcements even people outside of finance will they raise interest rates or keep them or, or lower them finally whatever it is 
and interest rate derivatives are basically uh, is basically a class of products which is the cheapest in terms of capital allocation and capital effectiveness is very important for people especially in crypto and kind of the most efficient in many ways to either express your views if you think that the fed will finally do something in interest rates and you want to speculate on that somehow if you want to express your view be, be that uh, whether you're a hedge fund or, or an individual trader even you could potentially do that and a lot of people majority of people are actually using uh, interest rate derivatives to manage risks associated with those rate fluctuations which affect the value of their assets the value of their portfolio or or, or anything else they're doing even, even their businesses occasionally so in crypto, we didn't really pay a lot of attention to the concept of rates or yield unless it's like, you know, mid to high double digits or, or higher than that in the previous cycle because we had we had a massive bull run when we were still kind of in that 100x or nothing mode, right? And, and right now, my personal view, and that's what we're kind of seeing in the market in this cycle, people are way more aware of... Uh, of, of risk, which has not been particularly involved in the previous cycle, and uh, way more aware of uh, the fact that there is no such thing as free lunch, right? And if somebody's offering you 50% per annum, it might be a little bit risky, and you might want to figure out what exactly is behind that number and, and how can you manage the associated risks. And people started seeing risk not as a, you know, that boring thing that people from Shopify are talking about, but actually what it is, and an enabler for a lot of a lot of strategies. So if you properly manage your risks, you can actually afford high leverage, you can afford a lot of things that you wouldn't be able to do otherwise. So we we kind of have all the building blocks of traditional capital markets in crypto. We have spot, we have futures, we have options, and, and rates is pretty much the only thing left out there, which uh, not a lot of people have been looking at closely, as I said in the previous cycle, and now we believe the next cycle is going to be better. So we're trying to bring it into crypto and trying to take advantage of the space we're in, doing as, as much of things we can do in a transparent, non-custodial, on-chain fashion, at the same time, keep the efficiency of, of traditional trading. So people who are used to trading rates or want to get into managing certain risks associated with it in crypto can do it using, using our product. Yeah, that's that's right. Look, I've got on my notes, it says, Alex, uh, that Row Protocol's first family of products are fixed to floating interest mm -hmm. rate swaps on a diverse set of index, index rates. And uh, in, in traditional finance, I believe this product comprises over 60% of the total outstanding interest and in interest rate derivatives. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, that's quite big. And also just give us a sense of how, how big, I, I guess, the, you know, the, uh, the market is for for trading um, uh, on uh, rates in legacy finance, just to give uh, give a sense of how big the opportunity is, I guess, by bringing it on chain. Oh yeah, we, um, I'm normally trying to be quite careful because these are obscene numbers, and there is no yes. clear indication that the structure of the market in crypto and and the application of the of those products in crypto will be exactly the same. Will will exactly translate from the TradFi markets, right? But in 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 TradFi, we're talking something like five hundred trillion dollars worth of outstanding interest, uh, and multiple dozens of billions. I I, I haven't checked the latest, but I. And majority of that indeed is fixed for floating swaps and futures, which is what, what we're trying to bring as our first product. Yep. So how then are you going to, uh, you know, what's the, uh, um, how many users do you have, I guess, is what I'm trying to say. How are you, how are you targeting those users? How are you uh, mm -hmm. letting them know about your product and uh, the ability uh, for traders to come and start trading interest rates. How do you reach the the crypto natives? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So we're we are a young protocol, as as you mentioned in the beginning and introduction. We started at the end of twenty two, and we launched for the time being in private beta uh, in the beginning of November. So we've only been live for a few months. We're live with on the mainnet and Arbitrum, and for the time being, we're really not going for quantity just yet. It's coming, but going for uh, the, the professional clients, people who understand the product can help us, uh, can, can help us and give us more than anything else, give us valuable feedback on how to make this product most useful to them. And majority of the traders that, that are using the product right now, the product handled right about $50 million worth of trading volume for the time being in that closed beta phase. We're going to go live with a 
we, we're going to go live with the public beta uh, probably before the end of Q1, if things go according to plan, which they seem to. We will announce it soon. It's, there is no official date just yet, but we hope it will be before the end of Q1. And uh, then hopefully that there will be a bit of a, we'll try to create a bit of a buzz around it. And uh, we get very good feedback from our initial set of clients. Uh, what we're really going for, for the time being, we're starting from professional traders. And by professional traders, I mean, not necessarily what people mean by only institutions, right? But it's sort of your top tier traders in crypto who understand complex derivative products. So your perp traders, your option traders, uh, who would also be interested. First of all, it would be easy for them to make a transition than for someone who is purely trading uh, cash spots, uh, that, that, that type of products, let's say your Average Coinbase user is probably not the one which will make a transition to non-custodial derivative product. But uh, anybody who is trading uh, perps, for example, be that uh, on like a whole bunch of DEXs, which is now available on all, all sorts of layer twos and, and layer ones, or uh, even on centralized exchanges, if you're trading perps on Binance or KX or Bybit or any of those guys, you, it will be pretty interesting for you to look into what we're doing. And these are the clients we're going for, starting from... Uh, people who are working for uh, some uh, tier one, tier two uh, trading firms in crypto, so specialized crypto native traders. Uh, some of them are our investors. Some of them are people we just know in the market for since, since we've been around for a while. And we're slowly also onboarding some individual professional traders. We got a pretty long wait list for people who uh, subscribed to get on our public beta when, when it's going to be launching. It's in, in, in thousands. We'll see what the conversion rate is going to be. We're again being quite careful about the projections, but the initial signaling is quite good. Yeah, fascinating. So uh, I think you're right, Alex, in, in identifying that you know your your average uh, Coinbase or or crypto spot trader is is probably uh, best to stay clear of um, too many um, advanced uh, trading systems uh, or advanced trading products. But love you to just talk through uh, for, I guess, yeah, the, the more advanced traders, the, the different use cases and benefits uh, that bringing interest rate trading on chain uh, does provide for them potentially. Sure, sure. So like a couple of, again, if you're talking about rates and trade quite, quite often, pre predominantly what people trade are treasury rates, right? Because everything else ties back to treasury rates because of the way assets are priced in trade quite. Price, sorry. And uh, by trading something like the Fed rate or SOFR or, or EFFR or uh, LIBOR back in the day, you're basically trading everything else. So crypto works slightly differently and we have to get a little bit more creative about it. And that's one, one of the concerns when people start thinking, people who are familiar with rates trading in TradFi, they immediately start thinking like, okay, so you guys are going to the treasury rates trading on chain, which we can do technically, but that's not really what we're going for as our first product. What we're interested in are things which are appealing to crypto native clients. So, for example, if you are a staker or you're a trader of perpetuals, both things are very crypto native, do not pretty much exist outside of uh, outside of crypto ecosystem. Uh, so what do you want? So what are the use cases that you have? You have a rate that you're either paying or receiving, right? If you're staking, you're getting some rewards from the network. If you're trading perpetual futures, you are uh, either paying if you're short normally, or you're, oh, sorry, if you're long normally, or you're receiving some kind of a floating rate. Those rates can be quite volatile. So if we take, if we separate those two cases, the staking case, the rates are less volatile, the perpetuals, the rates can be very volatile. So let's imagine that you're running some kind of strategy, a queue trading basis on Binance. It's one of the simplest things that pretty much every professional trader in crypto does. Your trading base is your buying spot, you're selling a perpetual future, for example, and you're collecting the funding. That funding is very volatile. So today you might be collecting the normally on Binance you collect. On average, it's something like 11% per annum what you're getting. But it can, as it happened two months ago, like suddenly the funding rate goes to, first it goes to plus 40%, and then it can actually go negative for a short period of time. And if you're actually looking for some kind of stable trade that will give you some sort of guaranteed uh, level of income uh, for, for over a period, then either you have to be really involved, you have to be really engaged, you have to you have to be really in the market to the point that when these like funding windows come through, you're getting paid every hour or every eight hours, you need to start thinking whether you need to close or open the position. And if you're working for, you know, Wintermute or GSR or any of the big trading houses, uh, you, you will probably do it for a living or you've got systems for that. If you're 
just maybe starting your business and this is not exactly what they have built out or you're an individual trader and you're still trying to replicate what those big guys are doing it might be quite difficult for you to take advantage of that and then you like wake up one morning and your whole pnl got wiped by uh by by some kind of sudden sudden rate fluctuation which literally happened over christmas when the market was quite excited about etf announcements so that is one of the examples of the risk you can actually get rid of. You can sell it to someone else using our platform. So you would come in and, for example, let's imagine you're short perpetual future and now you're getting paid 25% as it, as it happens over, over Christmas and New Year's. And you're quite happy with 25% and you would like to lock it in for a period of time. Uh, there is a risk that it will go down to 10 or even to five where it kind of five to 7% where it sit on set, set on average uh, over the course of the past year, or you can even go further down. You can even end up being, instead of being paid, you will end up paying that rate. You're quite happy with 25%. You might even be happy with 20% as long as it's guaranteed for a period of time, let's say for a quarter. So that's one of the simplest use cases for what we're doing. And if you're using, if you're doing that as a part of some other larger strategy, that actually enables a very different level of uh, predictability, which again, like optimizes the level of risk, increases the amount of leverage you can afford to take because now you have the predictable income. So your, your chances of being wiped are much, much lower or non-existent if, if that's the main risk you're trying to, uh, to exploit basically. And this is one of the use cases on the staking side, uh, you're getting, for example, you're staking your Ethereum and you're getting some kind of a, uh, again, floating rate. Back in May last year, it was at around about 7% per annum what you were getting paid. Now it's about three and a half. Again, if uh, you are, back in the day, you're happy with 7% or so you have a view that the staking rates on Ethereum are actually going down because more, more validators are coming online or that the network activity will have some, you have some view on the fundamentals of Ethereum. And you're happy to fix that rate, maybe not at 7%, but 6.5% at that point in time for a year. Again, that is something you can do with a, with a product like ours. And, and you can essentially get yourself paid a fixed rate instead of the floating rate and give away your floating rate to the market. And therefore, you hedged against any potential fluctuations. Yeah, got it, got it. Uh, thank you, Alex. You know, you talked also about... Um, you know, using some of these strategies as indeed part of a larger strategy. And I imagine as uh, DeFi starts to come back and more people start to come into DeFi, we get more and more DeFi protocols, uh, fixed income and interest rates, derivatives will just become, uh, yeah, more and more integral to the DeFi ecosystem over time, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. We, we used to use the term money Lego back in the day yes. i think it's not that not that popular anymore but people used yeah. to say it a lot a couple of years ago in in tradfi there is money lego called structured products right and that that is actually what a lot of people are doing and this is a massive market it's 10 times the spot market kind of in size and it's 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 pretty big and pretty popular and there are products which are aimed more at retail audiences, like some simple things like capital protected notes, which offer you some rate of return without uh, the, the downside, which is also achieved by hedging certain risks with derivatives. Uh, and there are professional products like you might be, you might have some kind of currency risk. You might be buying things from, you know, buying cars from Europe and selling them uh, to the US, right? And then you've got your, your Euro USD risk in or you've got some commodity risk. There, there are a bunch of things you can do. And rates are always, pretty much always the component of it. So that this product is a is, is a cornerstone, kind of one, one of the elementary particles of a lot of strategies, a lot of things people do in TradFly. And as the market gets more sophisticated and use cases get broader, there are going to be more and more use cases for all derivative products. And rates is definitely one of the, the rate derivatives is one of one of the key things that, that need to exist. There are some things that are just not possible without being able to manage that risk properly. Yeah. All right. Uh, let's change tack slightly, Alex. You know, you said um, mm -hmm. at, at the beginning of the show, you talked about how, you know, interest rates um, are just a constant topic of discussion uh, around, uh, you know, for, for, for traders. Uh, it's just part of the, the macroeconomic climate. What is the Fed doing? Um, 
each time they have one of their meetings, are they, you know, they're going to keep pushing rates up? Are mm -hmm. they going to start to drop rates? Of course, um, markets are always uh, waiting to see what will happen next. I'd love to just get your view, I suppose, on the kind of, yeah, the the broader macro picture and, and what you see happening over the media to longer term in terms of interest rates and, and their um, effect mm -hmm. on the market. Oh, um. I, 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 I can try, but I'm not <laughs> really an expert in my, in micro trading, like, you know, Raul Paul or like one of those guys that we all know and love in, in our space or yes. like very experienced micro traders and, and, and analysts. But I guess uh, in terms of the impact for, you know, I'm, I'm kind of very down to earth. I'm thinking like, for example, what are the products I can, I can make useful for the market depending where the Fed policy goes? So I think everybody, everybody's consensus now is it's pretty unlikely that the interest rates will keep rising significantly over the course of the next of 2024, right? Yes. So everybody is sort of waiting for Fed to uh, stop cooling off the rates and uh, the ECB and the other guys following suit. The question is more like when. Because the inflation risks seems seem to be more in, in 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 control now. Inflation seems to be more in control, and there is very little incentive for the policymakers ahead of the elections in the United States to risk, you know, sending the economy into recession by making credit very very expensive. It's expensive enough already compared to what people are now used to over the course of the past fifteen years. So to me, the question is, I, I do not know when when uh, Mr. Powell will decide to uh, change his, do, do what everybody expects him to do and, and decrease, the, decrease the rates, start lowering the rates. But I know that, for example, some of the things that people were hungry for in crypto, when and if that happens, uh, back in 2021, one of the reasons people were so interested in DeFi yields is because there was no yield in traditional finance. So if you start looking at the, the U.S. dollar yield in the beginning of the year was with like, what one percent in twenty. I think if I, if I remember correctly, the timelines so one one and a half percent at the beginning of twenty twenty one, and before that it was pretty much zero on the floor for a very long time. Even worse for euro, even worse for GBP. So anybody who has some USD suddenly starts getting interested in those things you can do by converting your USD to USDT and have reasonably reasonably as much as you can be uh, risk free strategies. Uh, by earning some yields, either you try to go all in. Some people just went all in and started from, oh, here I can make uh, five to seven percent in crypto on lending to some relatively safe counterparty. Some people got a little bit more excited and went for, you know, Terra or twenty percent on UST. We know we know how that ended, and some people get really excited and started uh, farming liquidity in various DeFi protocols. Some of them are still successful. Some of them are now defunct. And again, people were just basically very hungry for yield because there was no real yield in TradFi. So a lot of a lot of products which we can also offer in partnership with other protocols ourselves in with, in partnership with some of the traders that that are going to be using the platform are going to become way more in demand again when the when the rates cool off and i think it's it's fair not just for us but for everybody in crypto uh obviously everybody's affected by the fact that when you can make you know if you're Aave and currently people can make five percent on treasuries there is not a lot of incentives for um you know keeping your money in usdt and lending that on Aave for two percent for example and that that's going to change with the market in crypto uh, getting a little bit more bullish. Hopefully, the, the current sort of bull sentiment will stay on, and the rates in TradFi cooling off. We'll have a lot of we will hopefully have a lot of uh, inflows into various crypto products uh, of all degrees of sophistication. Yeah, very well said, Alex. And yeah, I mean, I think that's. You're right. The the consensus thinking is that yeah, the the Fed will eventually. Uh, begin to to drop those rates. Just a matter of uh, a win, but it does feel like everything is kind of lining up with uh, you know the the Bitcoin halving uh, coming in April. Mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. Kind of a, a general sentiment that uh, the bull market is on the way. Of course, we've got the Bitcoin ETFs all you know lined up, uh, ready to go. Uh, lots of inflows flowing into all of them, and if all that starts to come mm -hmm. together, then of course. 
you know, crypto traders being crypto traders, eventually uh, they will just get um, itchy trigger fingers and they'll want to go further out on the risk curve and just uh, look look for those extra tasty yields. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, just, uh, the, the risk appetite will come back, won't it? It it will for sure. It's, it's our job to maybe try to treat it a little bit more responsibly this time around to make sure. I don't think the market or the regulators have an appetite for another FTX, for another Celsius, for another Terra. No. We, we, we have to do better this time. Let's hope so. Look, as we start to finish off this part of the podcast, then Alex, uh, number one, you know, for anyone interested in learning all about the row protocol and how they can start trading interest rate futures. um, Mm -hmm. Yeah. What should people do? Uh, Where should they go? Um, Tell us a bit more about the the beta that you're running at the moment and, you know, what's in, what's coming down the product uh, pipeline. What what are you working on? So yeah, where can people go? How can they get beta access? What's uh, what's coming next? Sure. Sure. Uh, So first of all, if if that any of that sounds appealing, uh, you can go and follow us on Twitter at raw underscore raw is R H O. So R H O underscore X Y Z. That's our Twitter account. You can also follow us on LinkedIn, uh, Raw Protocol, Raw Labs. Uh, you can also go to our website. It's currently just a landing page that offers you to submit your uh, request for access to our beta. But uh, we are building a wait list for when the public beta will be on, which will happen, as I mentioned, in, in a number of weeks. We hope to do it before the end of March. Uh, so you can go to raw, R-H-O, dot trading. Uh, that's our website where you can basically request beta access and we will reach out to you when uh, we will be admitting the next batch of the beta users. Right now on the existing product, you can trade, as what I mentioned before, you can trade the funding rates for uh, futures on Binance. And you can trade uh, Lido staked ETH rate uh as well if that is your interest there are a few more products coming in these are basically the ways for us to test the tubes with the current uh limited set of traders that we have admitted to the private beta if you want to participate in the private beta if you're a professional trader if you would like to explore providing liquidity or uh, or using our products for anything that's useful for you providing liquidity for yield obviously or or uh, using these products for anything that's useful for you you want to talk to us about what's next in the pipeline, you can reach out uh, through that bit request form. You can send a message to hello at rawlabs.io or you can find me on LinkedIn or Twitter. I'm Alex Rifkin. I'm pretty pretty accessible everywhere. I'll, I'll, I'll make sure we'll sort you out uh, with the right people with the right access. In terms of things which are coming through the pipeline, uh, there are, there is a bunch of things. There are a couple of things we're really excited about that you might have uh, figured from the from from what I was talking about before. So we're really excited about the whole perp trading space. I think we're this is an awesome product. It's simple to understand. It's super useful. It concentrates liquidity where where it should be for various kinds of trades and various kinds of traders. We're very excited about that space. There are plenty of products. There are plenty of uh, uh, there are plenty of venues where those products are traded on chain, off chain. We will continue going into that direction. We're quite excited about that space. So one of the first things we're gonna we're gonna release, we're gonna announce it soon. Uh, uh, there's gonna be a product uh, which is essentially an index of the top funding rates on uh, of funding rates on top exchanges. Uh, we'll share the details with everybody a little bit later, but that will basically allow you to trade a very significant percentage of uh, perps uh, funding rate risk free, which is major for a lot of trades people uh, are currently focusing on in crypto. And uh, we're also very excited about staking, restaking, yield bearing stable coins. That's a very powerful theme that we we're going to be. Uh, very interesting to a lot of traders. I think it, I think some of the protocols out there, like you know your blasts, your mantas on the L2 side, uh, a lot of people uh, who are focusing like Renzo and, and a bunch of people who are focusing on restaking space, that's going to be a big deal. And we we would like to offer some products to the the users and holders of those tokens and users to those protocols as well. That's also coming through. And uh, we will announce all those things in the next few weeks. We've got a lot of exciting things coming through. We've been working on the product for about a year. 
we're just starting to get sort of properly out of stealth right now and we, you you'll hear a lot from us going forward fantastic fantastic thank you alex all right i reckon what we do now is we go to a very quick break and then when we come back we'll finish off we'll have some fun we'll run you through the very famous crypto conversation hot take round back in one second uh -huh. thanks Andy. hey what are you still doing up I've just spent my entire Friday night researching Bitcoin charts, crypto glossaries. My brain feels like it's going to explode. Why don't you just use BitGet? It's going to save you at least 10,000 hours trying to learn it yourself. It's an online crypto exchange. You can copy successful real-life traders having their expertise to make smarter trades. Really? Yes, really. Don't miss out. Get on it now. And by the time you're done, Bitcoin will be worth about $100,000. I just got my cat to help me do the research. Hands off, gains up. Start copy trading on BitGet. All right, we are back and I'm with Alex Rivkin uh, from Rolabs, CEO at Rolabs, building out the Ro protocol, uh, the interest rate derivatives trading protocol. It is. Uh, Alex, I'd like to finish each podcast with a quick round of rapid fire crypto conversation hot takes. Are you up for it? Let's try. I'll Let's try. try. Don't worry. Don't worry, Alex. I'm just going to run some questions at you. Just give me your kind of honest hot take style answer. Question one for you. Where would you say you sit, Alex, on the Bitcoin maximalist uh, to multi-chain opportunist spectrum? I am probably bang in the middle. I think uh, there are probably a few chains too many in crypto right now. We will definitely, we're already seeing some patterns and we will see some consolidation. I don't think there's going to be a single chain, be that Bitcoin or Ethereum or Solana for that matter. I think there's going to be a limited number of chains. If, if you had like to, to, to get a number from me, I would probably say five to 10 that have certain utility and all have their own uses. We don't know what these chains are going to be. Some of the existing ones, probably most of them are the existing ones, but I'm sure there are going to be some new exciting entrants as well. But there's not going to be 200 and there's not going to be one as well. Yep, makes sense, makes sense. Very well said. All right, well, what would you say is your firmest conviction crypto opinion, Alex? Firmest conviction crypto opinion, oh God. I've got so many opinions, hard to choose. Yeah. Firmest conviction crypto opinion. I think the debate on whether crypto or blockchain is here to stay, and especially because that's where I spend most of my time in the context of capital markets, I think that debate is over. We have arrived. We are not going anywhere. We do not exactly know what place we will. Is crypto a different asset class? Is crypto a, 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 a technology like blockchain a technology for tokenization of real world assets? I, I don't know what's going to happen, but I know that there is uh, the, the, the whole blockchain and crypto and digital asset space have established itself very firmly in traditional finance within the institutions that everybody is so hungry for, for their participation in the crypto space. We're not going anywhere. And pretty much all of the narratives that are popular right now uh, with institutional investors, be that trading crypto assets or tokenizing real world assets or the mix of the two, are here to stay, at least that way. Yep, I like it. All right. Uh, Alex, Bill Gates famously said we tend to overestimate what we can accomplish in two years and underestimate what we can accomplish in 10. Um, anything you like, you know, DeFi, um, Row Protocol, mm -hmm. Web3, what does it look like in 10 years time? Oh, gosh. Yeah, I didn't know. I mean, I'm saying that quite a lot. I didn't know I was quoting Bill Gates. I was wondering who is the smart person who said that. Thank you. Uh, DeFi and Row Protocol. So I think uh, in 10 years time, uh, I do not think there will be significant as significant of a uh, discrepancy and, and line between what we call now CFI and DeFi. I think DeFi has its, its advantages and centralized finance, be that crypto exchanges or traditional finance, has its own advantages. And I think eventually we will merge and we will figure out that some things are better to do on-chain while some other things are maybe better to do off-chain and that on off-chain uh, collaboration bridging uh, between those two worlds will be way more efficient 
And I think what we're going to see is something we have started seeing already in DEX space, for example, when you have a lot of exchanges uh, which are kind of hybrid and they're using the advantages of both worlds, the transparency and the security of the blockchain networks for, for example, safekeeping assets and, and managing collateral and the efficiency of uh, matching and pricing assets off chain uh, for, for, for that. And we're going to see more of that. I do not think there's going to be DeFi as we know it. I think that the sort of more religious DeFi, religious decentralization thesis will also have its space, but it will probably serve very particular use cases. And predominantly, we're going to see maybe the likes of you know Nasdaq and, and New York Stock Exchange, or at the very least, anybody who has anything to do with digital assets will use some form of on-chain activity, some elements, some components of DeFi in their day-to-day -day products, and, and it's going to be awesome. Fantastically said. All right. Flip side of that, Alex, is a quote by William Gibson, who said, the future is already here. It's just not evenly distributed. Uh, what's an example of the future? <laughs> What's an example of the future being here right now, but most people aren't aware of it? In, in crypto or everywhere? Yeah, it could be anything. Uh, anything. Yeah, I have, I, 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 it, it's, it's a bit of a cliche by now, but I gotta say AI. Yeah, we jokingly, even within Raw, we jokingly call uh, ChatGPT and some uh, other AI assistants our employees of the month. It, 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 it's kind of almost a shame not to use any of those tools by now in the workplace. Uh, it's very interesting to see some of the younger people, people who are going through the university right now, they are already using extensively uh, the, the AI tools in their day-to-day -day study life, and they wouldn't be they wouldn't be able to imagine their life without those uh, helpers in the same way we cannot imagine our lives without smartphone right now. And that will happen much much faster than we think. I, I I'm sure there are there are other things I'm excited about, but this is this is so obvious that everybody, pretty much everybody, heard about ChatGPT right now. But not there are still majority, vast majority of people who never tried it, never used it. I, it's about time. It, it's going to be amazing. I'm I'm super excited about everything that's going on in that space. And by the way, even blockchain AI, some of the products which are I think the biggest products uh, that like the name eludes me right now, but the market cap of that is around about two billion dollars. Uh, it's kind of a top 100, top 200 uh, token out there. But when when things properly blow up, oh, we're probably we, we're going to be talking significant multiples of that. Yep, yep. All right, very well said, Alex. Time to wrap this up. Final question: What is your favorite science fiction book, film, or TV show? I am a big uh, fan of. Frank Herbert long before the movies came about. So if, if you said generally fantasy, I, I would say I'm, I'm, a big, I'm very big on Tolkien. Yeah. And that that world and that ecosystem, but on the sci-fi, I have to go with, with Dune. I have to go with Frank Herbert. That's been long before the long before the Hollywood movies. I was very little when I read it for the first time. It's one of the things that made the, the most impression on me. Fantastic. Still does. I love it. Great answer. Thank you, Alex. Hey, this has been a lot of fun. I uh, really enjoyed talking to you today. Thank you for coming on the show. Close it out. Uh, tell people where they can find you on X, Twitter, wherever else you like to hang out online. And again, you know where people should go uh, to learn all about uh, the Row Protocol. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, please follow me on Row Protocol on Twitter. So I'm Alex underscore Rifkin. That's R-Y-D-K-I-N. Uh, Raw is R-H-O underscore X-Y-Z on Twitter as well. And soon we will be launching our Telegram and Discord communities ahead of the public beta. And please uh, follow us on Twitter and follow our updates to know when that happens. We would be really keen to engage with anybody who wants to talk about rates derivatives and crypto, DeFi, anything you guys are excited about. Awesome. Thank you so much, Alex. All the best and bye for now. Thank you very much, Andy. Thanks for having me. All right, there you go. That was Alex from Row Protocol. Thank you to Alex and the team. Thanks for coming on the show. Yeah, shout out to Frank Herbert. June, uh, 2nd June, the movie comes out very soon. Is it? Oh, it's, it's soon. Maybe a month away. I don't know. So yeah, sci-fi epic. This uh, is now the end of the show. Thank you for listening, team. Make sure you're subscribed. Um, you know the drill. Uh, but 
yeah, that is the end of another show. This was the Crypto Conversation for Brave New Guy. See ya.